after logging to the application you have if you are the user and you are coming from certain department and as a part of your work your role roles and responsibility we have a couple of things to do as a part of business like day to day life you are representing a sales department or a purchase department or a production department or a finance department so definitely you will be having some roles and responsibilities right when you have some roles and responsibilities a sales person cannot behave like finance guy a procurement guy cannot behave like a store guy a store guy cannot behave like a production guy that means each department and whoever is the person working in that particular department will be having their own roles and responsibilities as per those roles and responsibilities we are going to give the accessibility of these responsibilities here you can see many responsibilities does it mean that everybody will be having these many responsibilities no if you are a sales guy we may give only order management only this responsibility maybe some restricted inventory responsibility means what what are the functions you should not do we have to disable and create one responsibility add what are the required menus and within those menus what are the required functions we have to customize those responsibilities and customize the menus custom menus and all the functions will be added to those custom menus so that whenever you open this responsibility only restricted access can be given i will show you how to restrict that is as a part of system administrator work you know how to use system administrator we have one more responsibility system administrator right we have here as a part of if you are working in in a company so you would like to raise one request but you do not have that request accessibility you will raise a ticket so that support team will ask your name username and give the accessibility right so the similar way system administrator is the responsibility if you are a consultant you are going to have the system administrator and as and when, as and when required the user requests by raising a support ticket and the ticket will be received by the IT department or ERP support department then they will the concerned person who is having this who is playing the role of system administrator will give the accessibility to the respective user if user is existing we will add the responsibilities if user itself is not defined in the system we define the new user and set up the password then add all the responsibilities then give the default username and password then he will log into the application and first time whenever you are logging to the application it will ask you it will demand for password change hello jivan how many times should i tell you mute otherwise i will block you okay now we have all the all these responsibilities and every responsibility will be having menus and functions we know what are the responsibility is having a plus icon if you expand if you click on plus icon that will expand we'll be having different plus icons again wherever we are having plus icons those are called menus and within the menus we have functions if you click on any of those functions then that resp that function will be open yesterday we discussed we are going to discuss inventory so let us go to the responsibility of inventory let us see the menus and within the menu we have functions let us click on one function to open the application completely now <clears throat> this is the inventory responsibility click on plus icon it will expand again we have some of the plus icons that means these are menus within the menus we will be having many functions let us see by clicking plus icon again it it will expand 
when it when it expands you can see many functions to open the application completely i have to click on any of those functions let me click on yesterday what i clicked the same thing i am clicking sub inventory transfer i clicked on that and i'll wait for the initiation the java initiation will happen and after that all the respective forms will be open that's it so it will be initiated then completely we have to wait have patience don't disturb the system completely it has been open now to open sub inventory transfer it is asking to which organization you belong to and in which organization you want to work let us say a sales guy who represents different distribution centers let us say in hyderabad we have itech city branch tata motor branch let us take tata motor we have itech city branch and we have patancheru branch then what happens <coughs> but both are inventory organizations warehouses but for both the warehouses the main company person will book the orders and they will ask respect to warehouse guy to ship the item to the respect to customer similarly if i have two warehouses like in it city and patancheru if i am the buyer for tata motor i am the buyer i will not be having buyer for patancheru i will not be having the buyer for it city branch these are warehouses i told you top most organization is business group within the business group we have ledger within the ledger we have legal entities within the legal entities we have operating units within the operating units we have inventory organizations within the inventory organization we have sub inventories within the sub inventory we have locators those locators are nothing but row rack bin in this structure i told you multi org structure is very important if you don't remember if you do not remember this multi org structure you cannot perform any work by using the application you won't understand so in this process just i am discussing it as a buyer if i am the buyer from tata motor i have to know the requirement of itech city branch and patancheru branch being a buyer i will raise a purchase order with respect to supplier keeping the requirement keeping the requirement of patancheru and itech city in mind let us say patancheru and itech city branch would require some tires because that warehouse is not having we are not having enough quantity of tires i have to buy when i want to buy being a buyer i should take the requirement of both the branches then consolidate then raise the purchase order for 1000 tires and ship accordingly ask the supplier to ship accordingly as per the shipments in the shipments i will split 1000 quantities into 400 i want at one branch 600 items i want at another branch but document is one line quantity is in the lines in the purchase order the details will be entering in one line having quantity of 1000 but that line will be having shipments having different locations and one one location is having 500 or 600 and remaining and another quantity another branch will be having shipment will be having 400 quantity and accordingly supplier will ship the item to respect to locations so being a buyer i have to consider both the branches that is the reason buying at operating unit level selling at operating unit level but manufacturing at inventory organization level why when you are at operating unit level you are on top position so what about the low positions like inventory organizations are coming under the operating units and you have to consider the requirement of all the inventory organizations 
all the inventory organizations which are coming under operating unit. I told you, one operating unit can have multiple inventory organizations. One inventory organization can have multiple sub-inventories. One sub-inventory can have multiple locators. Similarly, one business group can have multiple ledgers. One ledger can have multiple legal entities. One legal entity can have multiple operating units. In this process, we have the organization structure now and we are going to inventory level because inventory is the base module for purchasing which is called as distribution why it is called as distribution module somebody says have you worked on distribution modules if you don't know what is distribution what is purchasing then you would say no i worked on purchasing but i didn't work on distribution that's it the interview will understand what extent you have the knowledge purchasing means distribution but we should know you should know why purchasing module is called as distribution module and SAP people they, be, they use it to say that SD what is SD sales and distribution what does it mean similarly in Oracle also SD sales and distributions manufacturing we are learning sales and distribution manufacturing and sales and distribution we together we call it as supply chain management in Oracle whereas in SAP they call it as SD But my question is, why purchasing module is distribution module? These are generic questions. When all the situation comes, we will be discussing. But these are, you know, these are the questions which decide whether you are real time or not. Really, have you worked or not? The way you answer, the similar way he understands, the interviewer understands to what extent, how many years of experience, whether your experience is real or not. <clears throat> So why purchasing is called as distribution module? Just now I gave the example. I am buying the item for all the branches, but locations are different. Supplier is one. I am reaching to the same supplier by having one document that is purchase order, but in the line quantity, I have the one item, but quantity is thousand, and that has been split into two lines, and each line is called one shipment, second shipment, first shipment, second shipment. First shipment, first shipment belongs to one location and second shipment belongs to another location. That means you are distributing, right? The thousand quantities have been distributed to two different locations, means two branches, which are coming under same operating unit. Have you understood? So, if you understand organization structure, you can understand sales, distribution, manufacturing very perfectly. So don't forget organization structure. It's very important. Topmost organization is business group, ledger, legal entity, operating unit, inventory organization, sub-inventory, locators. This is the organization structure. Every organization in the world, whatever the company, whatever the business unit which is using ERP, that should follow this organization hierarchy. Else, they cannot do the business across the world. They can do local business. Simple. Now, I am going to be an inventory guy. As a part of inventory, I told you, inventory is nothing but warehouse. In the warehouse, who works? Storekeeper, store manager. Then we'll be having some executives in the store. Who works under the storekeeper or store manager. Now, what is the activity of store manager? He maintains the store. He will be having godown, which is called a store. In godown, we have open yard, we have closed rooms, we have row rag bins, we have locators, we have sub-inventories. In the warehouse, we have partitions. I told you warehouse, if yesterday I gave the build, building exam, uh, uh, example. If you take business analyst building, we have ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor. Entire building is a warehouse. But each floor is a sub-inventory. Once you enter into the sub-inventory, it is also having 1000 square feet of area. You can keep any item at any point of time at any at any place. 
to locate that item exactly you should know the locator it is as same as geometrical coordinates if you have x axis and y axis can you point out on paper i have x axis and y axis can you point out one point which is having coordinates of x as 2 centimeters y as 6 centimeters then what you will do you will move towards x axis for 2 mid 2 centimeters then perpendicularly you will travel towards y axis to a distance of 6 centimeters then you put a point that means the coordinates x and y are going to decide the exact location of the point similarly sub inventory is so big even though it is partition in that partition if i keep three inch bolt and not somewhere if you know the locator i can go to that locator and pick the item perfectly if this this is the case like this is the case where you know the locator directly go to locator and pick the item if you don't know the locator then what happens you search inch by inch in the thousand square feet you enter into the floor start from one corner to all the all the way you have to search so it's very important because if you want to identify the item exactly where it is then you should know the locator within the sub inventory now we came to inventory responsibility we entered into inventory responsibility that you can see here once you give the username and password we have the responsibilities on the left hand side and you go to inventory and expand inventory responsibility you have the menu expand menu and you have the function that is sub inventory transfer click down sub inventory transfer while opening the sub inventory transfer it is asking in which organization you are going to work i have multiple branches these are all warehouses these are all branches in which branch we want to work i want to sell at something which is having manufacturing sales distribution only this organization this organization wherever discrete is mentioned we gave the name like this okay to identify and remaining organizations are not manufacturing units simply it is and this one and this one are manufacturing units remaining or not manufacturing units this means a distribution center now i want to work in the organization where we have sales distribution manufacturing so i want to take either this or this now let me select this when I select this I already clicked on sub inventory transfer right if you go to that form I clicked on this particular function right when I clicked on this particular function it has opened this form and it has opened Java initiated form this is the form right so now this is the form sub inventory transfer is the form but how to use sub inventory transfer we will discuss but to open the application i have to click on one of those functions does it mean that we are going to work directly on sub inventory transfer no we are going to discuss some of the concepts of inventory and how those concepts have been defined in the system how we are going to make use of those items as a part of inventory what are the roles and responsibilities a store guy is going to do you should know because you are the consultant we are going to train the end user we are going to train the storekeeper if you don't know what is the roles and responsibilities what are the roles and responsibilities of a storekeeper how can you train the storekeeper then so that is the reason first you should know the business of storekeeper so in this process I have I am closing first of all you should know in the oracle applications what are the basic things see whatever you can see here 
these are all menus and functions that you could see from here whatever you could see here the same thing is available here right what wherever the plus icon is there you can expand that when you click on that it will it will expand okay when you expand you have menus and sub menus see in the left hand side wherever the plus is there expand if you click on plus plus it will expand all these if you click on one plus wherever it is highlighted only this can be ex expanded see what is the difference i clicked here i want to collapse it will collapse only one once again it will expand collapse expand collapse then what is the difference between plus plus and minus minus see just i highlighted this and i clicked on this it will expand only items and i clicked on minus it will collapse only items now i'll click on plus plus what happens observe it will expand all the menus have you observed all the menus now if i want to collapse all then you have to click on minus minus what happens mine if i click on minus minus let us see i clicked over so these things are how to use the application how to navigate these are the basic things if you practice once you will be you will be familiarized so first day you have to practice like this what are the options available in the form what are the options available see these are responsible sorry this is the responsibility and these are the menus and within within the menus we have functions and any of those functions you are working rigorously like every day you are working on this then you can expand and whatever you want you can expand and you can add to favorites by selecting this you can add to favorite so that it will be coming top 10 list so no need to expand this whenever you are going there you click on this that particular form will be opened means otherwise you have to expand all these right if you want to go to setup in the setup i want to do something in the transactions host types i have to if i add here simply going to setup scroll down then transactions then source type i have to click these many times these many times so if you add to favorite what happens simply i want to go to source type simply go to source type that's it if i go to shipping network i, I added to top 10 list so it's very simple to go to shipping networks but if i want to go to shipping network you should know the navigation how to go there i have to search by one by if you don't know the navigation i have to search if I know the navigation, even I know the navigation, I have to go to setup. I have to go to organizations. In the organization, we have shipping networks. This is what the navigation. How many times should I click? How many times should I expand? So it's very simple. If you add it, what are the functional, what are the functions you'll be using day in day-to-day -day life as a part of your profession? Then definitely you have to add to top 10 list then you can work simply in this process we have different transactions we have to do as a storekeeper what are those transactions and what is the basic terminologies what are the basic terminologies we'll be using as a part of inventory Okay, now you can see move order here. Let us first understand what are the concepts we are going to discuss at high level today. I'm going to show you the application. Now, what is move order? If I expand this, we have move orders, transact move order. What is move order? The order now the name itself is indicating move orders you want set an item let us say you are working in production department of tata motor so in the production department we will be having production engineer production engineer wants to manufacture a product 
when he wants to manufacture a product, he would require raw materials, components, sub-assemblies. When you want components, sub-assemblies, then definitely you should ask to storekeeper. You are working in production department. You want set a number of tires or brakes, engine, clutch, many things. As a part of manufacturing, what are the item you would require? You should keep with you and you assemble, then only you will get the finished good. In the process, first of all, all the items will be maintained by the store guy. But we are from production guy, production department, then how can you have all these items? Until and unless you ask the item to the storekeeper, storekeeper will issue the material to the production department. Production department, whatever the items have been issued by the store guy, will be received and will be kept in our manufacturing area, production area, plant area. All are same. Your production area, plant area or manufacturing area. That means you should request first. You should request for items. So how do you request in the application? Everything should be tracked. You asked. That should be there should be a proof in the system. Yes, you have asked. So you are going to raise a being a production guy. I want set a number of tires. Then create a move order, which is nothing but a request to the store. Create. Enter the details, what item you would require, what quantity you would require, and where do you require, in what sub-inventory, and enter the item, what item you would require, you select the item, what quantity. So, raise the request by entering all the details. That request to the store is called move order. Okay, you have raised move order. Move order. You want certain items, right? Your manager is concerned of, concerned about what of the item you have, you 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 have asked. That should be notified, should be approved by your manager, right? So your request should be approved. When the status changes to approved, that is called valid move order, approved move order. That is a document, the basic requirement document. What are the request? That is nothing but whatever the requirement you have. You request to the store so that store can issue the material. In the process, there is a request to the store to be raised that is called move order. Simply, if I open the move order, let us say I am the production guy. I want certain items. So, what I am going to do? So, I am going to generate a number because I am creating a document. Document should have a number. Description, I want tires to manufacture a finished good. I can write tire requirement for the production. I can write then transaction type. We have a number of transaction types. What are the transaction types? We have move order issue and move order transfer. Very important question. What is move order and what are the transaction types related to move order? It's simple. There are two. One is move order issue and one is Another one is move order transfer. You should know the difference between move order issue and move order transfer. Both are different. What is move order issue? Move order issue means you are requesting a store guy to issue the material to outside. Outside in the sense, if you are from Tata Muta, from the branch of Hyderabad, main branch of Hyderabad, and you want to issue some material to outset due to some reasons. To give it to outside, we call it as issue. If it is transfer, it's not to outside. Instead, internally, we are moving from one place to another place. In within the Hyderabad, we have Tata Motor branch in which we have store area and production area. What is store area? That is a sub inventory. What is production area? That is also sub inventory. We call it as WIP store. We call it as W working process store. But I want the item at WIP store. 
I want the item at WIP store. I do not want the item at WIP store, but still the item should be given to outside. That means item you cannot see within the organization. Two cases. Listen carefully. Move order issue means you are raising a move order that is a request to the store in order to issue the material to outside. Move order transfer. Say you are raising a move order which is request to the store but to transfer the material from main store to my store but both the stores from same inventory organization. What is inventory organization? Warehouse. What is warehouse? Let us take for example in Hyderabad we have ITX City branch. In ITX City we have one location where, where there is an office. In the office we have when I say warehouse you might be having manufacturing there if it is manufacturing unit. Let us say we are manufacturing. If it is manufacturing, then you are working as a production guy. What are the item you want? You have to keep it with you. So there is a specific area where you can keep. What is that area? That is nothing but your sub inventory. That is nothing but WIP sub inventory. But WIP sub inventory is the production area. But whenever the company buys the product, it will be kept in storeroom. That storeroom is different. That is a main store. So you should approach to the store gate to have the material. How do you approach? By raising a move order. Raise move order which is nothing but a request to the store. Then send to, once it is approved, send to store guy. Store guy will transfer the material or issue the material based on the transaction types. Move order issue means what? Item is going out. You are requesting by raising a move order request. And you are asking to issue the material outside, not to within internal internal sub inventory, internal organization, or within the organization you have multiple sub inventories, and within the sub inventories you are going to transfer. If you request to transfer between two sub inventories from main store to the production area, from main store to the sales area, from main store to the delivery area, you have different area. You are transferring, you are moving your item from one area to another area. That is called, but within the organization, which is called move order transfer. But move order issue, you are asking somebody to give the material to outside. It's very important when you discuss move orders, move order issue, and move order transfer. What's the difference between move order transfer and move order issue? That's it. Based on the selection. You will go for the lines. Enter the item. Sorry to interrupt you. Actually, I have a question here. So, when we say a move order issue, like uh, when the items uh, are moved out of that particular sub inventory, uh, so will the accounts be affected and will that uh, items be out of that particular operating unit? Always items maintained at inventory organization, not at operating unit. You are purchasing, you are selling at operating unit level. Whenever you are doing the transactions, it is with respect to the manufacturing and with respect to the receiving, with respect to, with respect to the shipping process. You are giving the item, then you are called, you are called as a share. You are delivering the item to somebody, means shipping. You are receiving from the supplier, receive it and store it. So it is at inventory organization level only. So whatever the transactions you are going to do in the inventory, that is at inventory organization level, not at operating unit level. Your inventory organization is a part of operating unit. So issue means item is going out. Transfer means you are moving from one location to another location within the inventory organization. Simple. Your business analyst building Ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor. I want to transfer the material from second floor to first floor. That is move order transfer. You are requesting to the third floor people to move the item from third floor to the second floor. You request, 
If that is approved, third floor people will transfer. Move order issue. It's very simple. You are asking third floor people to give it out somebody. That's it. You will not find that item after perform move order issue in the building itself. Neither first floor nor second floor or any floor. Move order issue means going out. Move order transfer means we are moving from one floor to another floor, whereas each floor is a sub inventory. Now you have to answer. He asked one question. So what about value? Your inventory value. Whenever you are buying, you are buying with a price. When there is a price, there is a value. When you are keeping that item in your sub inventory, and your sub inventory is having a value. If you bought ten tires and each tire is hundred dollars, ten multiplied by hundred. Thousand dollars worth of items are there in the third floor. Out of ten tires, you want to transfer two tires to second floor. Then what happened? Your third floor, second floor, first floor, ground floor, every floor is a part of inventory organization. Now tell me what is the worth of tires existing in third floor? Thousand dollars, right? So. Hundred dollars multiplied by ten tires, because hundred hundred dollars is the price of the item that you, with what price you bought from the supplier. You kept in third floor. Now, if somebody asks, what is the value inventory value of tires currently existing in the warehouse? Then you will search all the floors: ground floor, first floor, second floor, third floor. You came to know in the third floor we have ten items. That's it. When you say ten items, ten items multiplied with the hundred thousand is the worth. So you tell me, what is the where is the value? The value is there at inventory. Value is there at inventory means inventory should have an account number. Definitely, if two persons are there. One person took a loan of fifty thousand rupees, fifty thousand dollars. So that guy gave fifty thousand. That guy, second guy, first guy has given the fifty thousand to second guy, not by cash, by account transfer. Then what happened? Which account has been credited, and which account has been Debited. What is debit? What is credit? Debit means always you are getting a message. So and so salary has been salary for the month of May two thousand fifteen has been credited to your account. So and so value. What does it mean? From bank point of view, there is a deposit of this much amount into your account, right? But from your point, that will be reverse. For him, it is a credit. For you, it is a debit. Oracle application. When I open the screen, I am working. The system belongs to me. I am the first person. So, I will say, whenever there is and there is a value increase, I use it to say debit. Means. If I put five tires into the second floor, from third from third floor is having ten tires. Second floor, you transferred five tire five tires. Then what happened? Five tires value has been credited to third floor and debited to second floor. But second floor and third floor both are coming from the same inventory organization. Nothing but business and list building, right? Warehouse. Now, if somebody asks, "What is your inventory value?" We have five items at third floor, five items at second floor after transaction. Now, what is the worth of? There is no difference. Why? Your sub inventories, both sub inventories, second floor and third floor, both are coming from the same inventory organization. 
then there is no difference again still you are having 10 items but only thing is that is exist if you have five existing in one sub inventory second floor five existing in third floor but your inventory value is same but when you go for move order issue I told you out of 10 if you want to issue the five items from third floor to outside that means your first floor ground floor second floor are not going to have those five items out of 10 which is available at third floor five items are going to be issued because somebody has raised a request move order to perform an action transaction action as issue item going out of my inventory my building my floor then you tell me now tell me what is inventory value your inventory value will be reduced I'm sure when I say inventory value total building value your item is tire check ground floor do you have any item no check second floor there's no item third floor yes initially 10 were there now 5 have been issued to where to outside when I ask inventory value you add the items value that is existing in third floor only we have after performing the action we have only five when you have five five multiplied by hundred is nothing but five hundred dollars is the worth means what there is a decrease there is a decrease in the value that means there is a credit has gone to the inventory material account what are the items you are keeping in the any floor? Those are nothing but inventory material. So the account related to inventory material, I am naming as inventory material account. When there is a decrease, I am saying credit. When there is an increase, I am saying debit. Now five items are reduced and the worth of five into five multiplied by hundred is 500 worth of items have been reduced means 500 has been credited to your inventory material account hello Kumar please mute from your side now If I select transaction type as move order transfer, it won't ask account number. If you select move order issue, it will ask account number. Simple. So you'll give some description and you'll you will select transaction type as something as move order issue. When you select move order issue, it will ask the account number. See? It's a mandatory field. All yellow fields are mandatory. I told you what is chart of account. Chart of account is nothing but a combination of segments. If you see here, the first segment indicates company, second segment indicates department, third segment indicates account, natural account, fourth segment indicates product class, fifth segment indicates intercompany kind of transaction, and future is nothing but right now we are not using, in future we may use if required. why we are keeping future because in case in future you would require one more segment it's impossible in case you are not keeping in buffer that is the reason while doing consulting whenever you are doing the consulting it's very important how many segments you are going to decide for your client the decision will be taken based on the business size of the client if client is so big then five segments are not enough six segments also very tough at least you should have seven segments as this client is very small six but what about 
the company large scale industry which is huge, which is using most number of segments can you tell me i will tell you the name of the company which is using most number of segments in the world that is g g is the company for certain operating units for certain ledgers they have 13 segments kumar please mute from your side so company will have some range of business is it small scale medium scale large scale i told you i gave you i gave you one example the company which is using the most number of segments because that is the business that is the business level they are doing you know their level of level of business is large scale the g general electricals which is having 13 segments otherwise they can't suffice it can't system can suffice their requirement they have track they are tracking like company department account product class intercompany employee and expense all these things you know they are keeping all the segments all together 13 segments forming a number that number is nothing but chart of account here i will show you the chart of account chart of account is nothing but a chart consisting of all the account numbers but that number having a 12 digit number or 13 digit number based on this a company can have two digit number department can have three digit number account four digit number five digit number product class can be three digit number enter company two digit number future four digit number you can see four zeros all together what is the number it can be 20 digits as your mobile number having how many 14 numbers your account number having 12 digits your ICICI bank account 12 numbers your Kotak bank having 18 digits access bank 18 digits current account having 18 digits saving account having 12 digits so this is what sort of account now let us see here for example how many chart of accounts are there and what are those chart of accounts let us see here go to combinations when you want to find something when you want to find something you have yellow fields we have grayed out fields what is grayed out field means to search the existing fields this color will be used remember this color okay we'll be using you will understand this is first class you may understand or not but only thing is down the line you will simply understand what is blue color what is yellow color yellow color to be entered mandatory field a gray color you can query means existing results you can query now how to query simply whenever you don't know the exact number you can enter percentage always you can use percentage whenever you don't know whenever you don't know something you can enter percentage when you enter percentage then click ok you can see all the combinations see 0 1 is one company you can see somewhere 0 2 also something is there so 0 1 meant for one company because you already entered into one organization right we got many organizations but when you select one organization the company code will be 0 1 because we are it is going to show you the accounts related to that particular organization so like that or you can have how many accounts are there 4000 can you see that 4420 accounts in which company codes are different also 9903 and we have 02 1 
what about all this the each code indicates company this code indicates department this code indicates account number this code indicates product class intercompany kind of and future if you select one i select this that's it see this is what sort of account Chart of account is nothing but combination of different segments forming one number whereas each segment is having some entity what is entity something to track i want to track that entity i want to track by using that entity certain certain business activity activity you can say then what item do you require you have to enter the item what type of transaction it will be more at issue it is defaulting from the top then you have to LFLs are mandatory you have to enter then what is the quantity you would require you have to enter the quantity quantity then you have to approve from your side if you have the authority it will be approved if it is not you are not having the authority it will move to your manager so your manager will approve so that you can send this document to store guy how by taking a print a report will be printed and based on on that report your manager will sign and that document will be sent to store guy store as it is approved so store guy will issue the material against that document that's it similarly we have we are going to do the transactions okay don't worry i want to show you today as much as possible so that is the reason because this is the final free class free class from tomorrow onwards if somebody pays then only we'll be having so let us see move on then we have on hand and availability it's very simple the language we use it here on hand quantity on hand within your range what is the quantity available in your store means if you want any item if somebody asks items thousand items i want do you really have thousand items in the universe in your store room i have to check for that reason i have to find by going to on hand quantity form you have to enter the item then simply you have to enter the you have to click on find then it will show you how much quantity how much quantity available for reservation against a customer if somebody asks of course we have hundred items but out of hundred Hundred have been reserved against a customer. Then can you promise a customer who is coming in the second as a second customer? Already we reserved thousand hundred items against one customer. We have only hundred stock. Then the second person will not be having any stock. So that is the reason. On hand quantity might be hundred, but quantity available for reservation might be different. So that is the reason. If you want to see how much quantity is existing and in which sub inventory and which locator it is existing, you can see that. For example, let us take some item. I want quantity. I have to search the item by entering percentage because I don't know the item code. Plus enter. Click OK. When I click OK, as I enter percentage, it will list out all the items. See how many items are there? Four thousand six hundred twenty-nine items they are having. You can see here. Now, if you drag it to downside, any item you take, I want to take this item. Select. Fine. When you select, nothing has come. That means there is no quantity at all. See, you can view by location. You can view by item. LPN. What is LPN? License plate number. What is serial number? We have serial number against one item. Every car is having a number, serial number. What is lot? Manufacturing lot. Every car will be manufactured on so and so date. But can you say that on that particular day, only one item has been manufactured? Some set of items have been manufactured. So whatever the item has been manufactured on the same day will be having the same lot number, or items produced on one machine will be having one nature, 
and the items produced the same item might have produced through another machine might be having different qualities so we have different lots lot is nothing but in one shot on one machine how many items have been manufactured those are all having the same characteristic or similar character characteristics so that is the reason we are assigning as one lot and we have grades is it a grade b grade c grade we have different grades and you can see here plus icon against the organization means what it is warehouse quantity when it is warehouse quantity we are searching for an item in the warehouse that means it can show you the item may exist five items may exist in one sub inventory simple in the building first floor second floor i have 10 items in first floor the same item we have 30 items in the second floor 30 plus 10 40 that 40 will be at organization level when you expand this okay you will be having as you are not having quantity so it's not expanding let us do one thing select one more item or clear i want to find all okay without giving anything if you find see you got the results it is the organization code in which we have these many items now if you expand this plus icon see it is the organization code now plus icon is there expand it is the on hand plus icon is there expand then we have these are the sub inventories mixing stage wip sub inventory wip finished good sub inventory these are all when there is a sub inventory let us say wip fin wip is nothing but manufacturing working process FIN meant for finished good. What are the finished goods existing in this sub inventory? You can see plus icon expand. What is FIN? I told you locator is a part of sub inventory. So FI WIP FIN is the sub inventory within which we F dot I dot N as locator. If you expand this, see these are all what are these? These are nothing but lot numbers. This is one lot. See, there's a plus icon. When you expand this, there's an item code. When you expand this, so again, we have, this is the lot. And for this item, that's it. This is final. When you click on this item, it will show you all the details. See, this is the organization within the sub inventory. And this is the locator. This is the locator. Then this is the item code. If you drag it to right hand side, description, unit of measure. What is unit of measure? Every item will be measured by a unit. If you say on your table, two apples are there, two numbers used to say that, or two each. What is that each? What is that number? If somebody says, I travel today 1000 kilometers by car what does it mean you can say thousand right thousand means there is no meaning thousand kilometers means there is a meaning what is that kilometer that is nothing but a unit of measure you measure anything by units here it is yards means length what is yards Lead. length right square yard is area square meter is area what is meter meter is a length kilometer distance Second, time, hours, time, days, time, years, time, grams, milligrams, cages, quintals, tons. What are these? These are all unit of measures. These are all generic, generic things. You know, you know all these things. So every item which is having a lot, having a quantity, on hand is this much. If you click on availability, see what is on hand? I told you, on hand you might be having, but available to reserve, do you have any quantity? Zero. What does it mean? This 33.3 quantity has been already reserved against a customer. So to know the status of any item, how much quantity is existing, how much quantity is available for reservation, all this information you can know from, you can get it from on hand quantity. Right? 
similarly we have different things like apart from that main important things like transactions we have in the receiving how to receive the item by performing a receiving transactions and sometimes you might have received from the supplier 100 items but instead of 100 you might have received 120 items then you can do the corrections and how to do that and there is a subunity transfer and you want to transfer the item from second floor to first floor first floor to second floor these are all called as subunity transfer now you can raise a question just now we discussed move order transfer where i told you somebody requested to transfer the material from second floor to the first floor when i say this then why we are discussing separately sub inventory transfer when second floor is a sub inventory third floor is also sub inventory if somebody transfer from second floor to third floor it is a sub inventory transfer but just now i discussed somebody request to do transfer the material from second floor to third floor by raising a move order because he is requesting right to request you have to raise a move order you raise it move order but what action I am performing? I am transferring the material from sub inventory to sub inventory. Then why are you calling as move order transfer? You should raise a question. It's a very important question. When there is sub inventory transfer and move order transfer, what is the difference between move order transfer and sub inventory transfer? It is very simple. Somebody asked, by raising a move order which has been approved based on that we are transferring the material from second floor to third floor which is nothing but sub inventory second floor as a sub inventory third floor as a sub inventory you are transferring from second floor to the third floor but somebody requested when there is a request that is called move order transfer if somebody request then only you will transfer that is called move order transfer when there is no request still you will transfer that is called sub inventory transfer but when will you use sub inventory transfer and move order transfer move order transfer everybody might have understood why because somebody requests against that request i will transfer but somebody will not request even though there is no request still i transfer what is this without requesting why are you transferring first yes i am the decision maker how because i am the storekeeper why then simple i will give an example your building let us say you are a builder means real estate builder you are building apartments and you are selling flats. Now, we are maintaining a godown. Let us say your godown is business analyst building, which is having all the floors, including ground floor. We have four floors. We have all the material kept in each floor. We have cement rods, iron rods, or cements, limestone, tiles, or any anything construction material. We have. Well, okay then. Please mute. Now. The builder who is maintaining all the stock in the warehouse, that warehouse is having different floors, and each floor is having some items related to construction, in which cement is also an item. I kept, I reserved cement bags by maintaining it. We have to maintain the items at different sub inventories. As a part of that, I have cement bags, cement bags to be maintained at second floor. Let us say second floor meant for cement bags, or third floor meant for cement bags. I have construction material, iron, wood, 
plywood, tiles, limestone, everything. I am maintaining at different floors. But third floor exclusively meant for cement bags. Now what happened? It is summer. I have used quantity. All the floor filled with filled with filled with all the cement bags. Now slowly summer has gone. Rainy season has come. So humidity increases. When there is humidity, there is a risk. What is the risk? That cement bag becomes hardened. Then nobody can use that cement bag. Then you are the loser. You are going to lose the money. Instead, you can plan accordingly. To save the money, you have scope. In what ways you have the scope of saving the money? Simply, summer I take all the floors for leach. But slowly, whenever any season comes, I go for only, instead of all the floors, I go for two floors or one floor, where I can maintain minimum number of items. Initially, summer, I have taken all the floors. Now, I am the decision maker because from the organization point of view, I am the, maintain, I am the person who is maintaining the store. I am concerned, concerned about all the items, all the floors. Slowly rainy season is coming. I will move all the cement bags in third floor to first floor or second floor so that I can vacate third floor so that I can save the lease amount for minimum three to four months. Not only that, what are the less quantity? I will stop buying the cement bags in the rainy season. But whatever the small quantity that has been left at third floor, I have to bring back to my floor where I am paying lease for that. But third floor, I am not going to pay lease. So I have to vacate that. Means I am taking, being a responsible person, I am taking a decision so that the bulk transfer should happen from third floor to second floor or first floor. Then I transfer and I will make sure the third floor is having no item. Then close it and hand over to owner. I am not going to pay lease for third floor. Over. Then what are the less stock available at second floor that you can consume? What are the small, small constructions you are doing? Construct and vacate it. And make sure the items are you are not buying for rainy season. That's it. So here what you are doing, you are, somebody is not requesting to transfer from third floor to first floor, but still you are transferring, that is called sub transfer. But somebody requests for one item, two items, three items, it's not bulk transfer. Somebody wants only five items, you transfer five. Based on the request, you are transferring exact quantity. That's it. So, in this process, this is the difference between move order transfer, sub transfer. Similarly, we have in the transactions, miscellaneous transactions. In the miscellaneous transaction, we have different transaction types. In the transaction types, we are going to see each by performing the transactions in the next class. But today, I am giving all the high level, what are the transactions available in inventory. We have all these transactions. Mainly account alias receipt, account alias issue, account issue, account receipt or miscellaneous issue, miscellaneous receipt, miscellaneous. So these are very important transactions. But what is the difference between miscellaneous issue and miscellaneous receipt? Not only that, account alias issue, account alias receipt. You are receiving the item. That means your quantity is getting increased. Means your inventory value is getting increased. Means there is a debit to inventory material account. You are giving the item out. That is nothing but issue. When you issue the material, item is going out of your inventory. That means your inventory value is getting decreased. That means there is a credit to inventory material account. 
it's very important to know the financial impact being experienced you should know what accounts are getting hit while doing the transactions if you don't know this even though you are not a finance guy you should know where is debit which account is getting debited which account is getting credited it's very important So we are going to see that in accounting like in Oracle whatever the accounting impact we are having that is double impact not single impact why if there is a debit there is a credit that's what I am talking about double impact for every transaction there is a debit and debit there is a credit I said your account has been credited means it has been deposited into your account from company's account right your company's account from your company account it has been it has been withdrawn and kept in your account means credit has gone to your company account debit has gone to your account similarly i am selling i am giving to out i am giving the item to outside means what your in inventory is getting decreased i am increasing somebody else that's what I'm indicating as the cost of goods sold when you give through sales order item will be given to customer thought customer is nothing but external party right is nowhere related to our company where we are using ERP we are giving the item to customer so what are the item you are giving to the customer by selling the process by selling the item only you are giving to the customer right when you sell the item customer is going to pay against your selling price but you should know to have the profit what is the cost of the item for you you might have bought the item for hundred dollars but you are selling at hundred dollars then there is no profit so with what price you bought to manufacture how much is the expense for you if it is hundred dollars that is the cost of the item which is not having the profit but when you are selling the item to the customer customer pays something if some, that something should be more than 100 then only you will have the profit if it is less than 100 then you are going to be lost you are going to be low, lose the amount you are going to lose the amount right so what are these transactions and apart from that we have very important concepts like we have planning in planning we have min max what is min max in every home also we are having different items rice dal or whatever it may be sugar salt and everything every, everything is an item right but you are planning after completing you are not going to the market and to buy the item before within two days salt is going to be completed then today only you are going to market and you are buying right that means you are maintaining some minimum quantity to be at safe side so that whenever you are cooking the food everything will be available all the time simply we are running the manufacturing company the manufacturing company is a Tata motor which is using ERP this ERP if it can suggest if if the ERP suggest this much quantity should be maintained for this item in your inventory but there is a less quantity now so you please buy the item or manufacture the item that is the information should come from the system then only user takes the decision by implementing the plan for that i should mention somewhere in the system always we have to make sure this item this much quantity to be maintained in the inventory when it comes minimum level then system should give me an alert to buy that's what planning how it works we are going to see and we have counting procedures we have counting here we have physical counting cycle counting what is the procedure for that what is the use of that but very implement very important one and very complicated one what is cycle counting what is physical counting boss this system is a logical system if system says this item is existing in the percent of sub inventory thousand items are there should i believe yes you should believe because it is implemented perfectly 
the system whatever is there that is as per your real data so i have to believe the system okay i believe it so customer approached approached me and i am the sales guy customer asked 100 tires okay 100 tires are available as per system system is showing on and on day 100 available to reserve is 100 okay i promised yes we have go and collect you pay the amount here okay he paid and he took the delivery note he went to warehouse by showing the delivery note please load my vehicle with 100 tires okay the delivery note will be given to the warehouse guys the warehouse guys will go to the inventory and check for the tires then by delivery note by taking the delivery note they went to the warehouse and to see the items of tires there is no item then what to do that means your system should be accurate to the real situation if there is a system quantity is zero then if you go to physical inventory when you go to inventory warehouse there should be zero quantity if something else then you can't believe your system that means your system quantity is wrong it is your duty to correct the system quantity as per real data so counting is there you have to make sure whenever you are counting system quantity should match with physical quantity that's what we call it as counting procedure but we have physical counting cycle counting what is the difference between physical and cycle we are going to see cycle means repeated in regular intervals physical means one time you are counting the same activity if you repeat it's called cycle process okay so that's it for today like this is what we are going to see and this is the class second class and